Hi, and thanks for taking the time to tune into the channel again. This is the final part of three videos that should, as I said many, many times, needs a professional touch, but unfortunately it's just me that's going to do it. Now, the story would be funny if it wasn't so serious, because it seems to me that before very long, this is going to blow up in the faces of Boris Johnson and his mates. By the way, the links to part one and two are in the description below, so feel free to check them out. Now, earlier we spoke about what the rapid tests were, do were doing and who was bringing them in and where were the problems. So we're going to look a little bit more at the rapid tests. And remember that the rapid test, pretty much like the pregnancy test, you know, you girls check to see if they're pregnant. They're pretty, those tests are pretty accurate. And one might rightly expect an accuracy test similar to that of some home pregnancy tests, which are, are about 99% ac accurate, to be about the same. Or maybe one might expect 85%, but not with ANOVA. <laughs> no way, baby. Not with the ANOVA rapid test. No way, Jose. In fact, it's been discovered and now made public that many of these ANOVA rapid tests had less than a 50% accuracy rate. Now, of those of you who may not get that one, let me make it clear. These ANOVA rapid COVID tests were about as reliable as calling heads or tails in a coin toss. But just as you think it couldn't possibly get worse, I'm afraid it, I've even got worse news for you. You see, 691 million lateral flow tests have been sent to the UK, but the results of only 14% have been returned. Remember we paid 800 million for these toys? Now, our great British leaders have misplaced 85% of the tests or kits. That's 680 million quids worth. They think they were sent out, but they're not even sure if they got the kits back or if they did get them back but lost results or that they didn't get the results at all and they're not really quite sure where the kits are, where the results are or where anybody else is. Now, doesn't this bring a whole new meaning to the abracadabra scenario here? Now you see it, now you don't. But now for the final encore in this kit saga, and honestly, I defy any of you to get your head around this one. Just two weeks ago, Bojo the Clown, our great and wonderful circus master, announced that the UK will be pursuing its test and trace program with even greater zeal and gusto. This was basically at the same time the FDA in the US and Innova, the people that distribute the damn kit, they were told that the kits, they're useless. Okay, that's it, they, they're useless. The FDA went so far as to advise thousands of households to dispose of theirs in their biohazard trash. Now the second last part of the puzzle, and I do hope you aren't falling asleep yet, we move on to a little known UK company called MoLogic. Now, the thing is, you see, that these guys, well, they're already well known in the industry. They had even come to the attention of the Bill Gates Foundation as early as 2016 and 2018 for the work they were doing in this type of testing procedure. So these weren't new guys, these were well established. And they've carried out tests in government labs all over the world, including the US, and especially in our own top secret facility in Port and Down, under our England Health Department. Now, the head of that public health department was Mr. Michael Brody. Now, MoLogic claims that its tests are one of the most accurate in the field of rapid testing. So, no surprise there. Their work has been acknowledged though and supported by the Gates Foundation, the Geneva-based Global Diagnostic Alliance on behalf of the World Health Organization as well as already being registered with the German Medicine Supervisory Authority and our own UK MHRA. The stunning news that the results from the testing kits MoLogic had submitted to Port and Down claimed the exact opposite to all the other institutions, and more logic were a little bit more than shocked. They were, they were panicking, they were, what, like, what's going on, man? 
So, but because they were suspicious, however, they asked to see the test results and were refused access. Now, this is strange, as this is a facility funded entirely by Her Majesty's government. This is taxpayers' money, and this sure as hell isn't covered under any official secrets act. Now, what type of tests were carried out, etc.? My logic couldn't understand it. But yet, order from the ANOVA rapid test continued. My logic were being stonewalled. But why? Surely the objective is to get a solution quickly and effectively, they thought. Well, they felt it was just a clerical error, so they wrote again, but this time further up the food chain, and again nothing. So on the third occasion, and being, I suppose, a bit pissed off as well, they wrote to Downing Street. This time their letter wasn't even acknowledged, let alone replied to. Now our boys on MoLogic said, Burger that for a game of soldiers, and are querying, as anyone in their position would do, why in the hell they cannot see the results of the tests carried out in the UK's own lab? Because, and let not anybody misunderstand this, standard practice in the medical industry and indeed in almost all testing grounds for even the UK BSI uh, kite mark, the proposer gets the results on how things were tested and after all this lab's findings were at the complete opposite end of all the other accredited labs. So the boys are saying, how did you test this? What were the results? What's going on? But yet at exactly the same time, the DOH, the DOHE, who's responsible for, for this, authorizes the ANOVA test that has A, been recognized as a complete failure, B, regarded by the British professionals as an absolute disaster, C, been withdrawn from its own home market under the highest alert the FDA has the power to issue. Is it any wonder why in August the little known body called Public Health England changed the way we counted COVID deaths? This was against all the advice of the medical industry. This is known to have skewed the results since and made and continues to make things look better than they really are. But yet again, this vital information was available to Westminster and it was ignored despite being published in Lancet and also the very highly respected and often referred to BMC Health Research Journal. So finally, let's look at the facts all of which are referred to in the links below. This is an opinion I'm giving to you. These are facts, you can check them out. We accepted product without testing them at all, let alone testing them properly. We awarded contracts to both people and companies that had little experience. Despite placing the biggest order for the kit, we still ended up going through two middlemen. We didn't even do this with the vaccines for, from any company. We went direct. Now, the Huffington Post reported that Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Atlantic Airline has been given contracts worth more than 8 million just to fly these tests from Beauchemin and Shanghai to the UK in January, February and March, according to the recently published government contracts. So could it be that the costs of the kits didn't even include delivery charges? We ignored the vice or all medical scientists when they said that these kits are not fit for purpose. We lost the results of 85 million of the kits anyway. The kits are distributed by a company that had, maybe not now, less money in the bank than your local corner shop. Our own locally manufactured kits that have been stonewalled, stonewalled ahead of those made in China. 800 million has gone for a runner. Court cases have been instigated and there will be blood, but whose blood is going to be the question. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.